What's up, y'all? Welcome to the channel, all randos and noobs. And anybody checking me out for the first time, welcome back to all my subscribers, including you new subscribers. I see the numbers slowly ticking up. Much appreciated. Um, unfortunately, this is the same view that you normally get with most of my videos. You know how they say, same view, different content. Uh, nobody says that I just made that up. It's a really stupid saying, but I'm going to go with it. Anywho, uh, the bike is running pretty good. Uh, my last video, one of my last videos was me doing the... Uh, Look, two and up with Onyx here. She's running real smooth now, especially since that check engine light is off. I did not do any videos while the check engine light was on because I was too busy trying to figure out why the check engine light was on. It's because after all of that talking and that jibbing and jabbing and yip yap I was doing about being meticulous and connecting all my plugs and wires and tubes and stuff back up, I <laughs> missed one. I did not connect the air box intake uh, temperature sensor. And I had a check engine light for about three days until I figured it out. And, uh, I mean, I figured it out day one, but it took another two days for the check engine light to clear itself because Kawasaki is, uh, the ECU has a very persistent memory. You can't just pull the old car battery trick and disconnect it and hope it'll die out after a couple hours. Nah. Until the code rectifies itself or you have performed the fixed action, the ECU will not, will not clear that code and the ECU code will now be in my persistent memory forever in the diagnostic log to show that I did have a check engine light which uh, was code 13 for the air intake temperature sensor open or short of course it was open because uh, it wasn't plugged up to nothing so anywho to the meat titers of this video I will go ahead and get the advertisement stuff out of the way had to change my uh, setup if you've watched any of my videos my GoPro Mains 360 was normally sitting right in the middle of the tank I had to move it over to the right just a little bit because uh, I couldn't see my phone my phone's my GPS my tracking and it's what I use when I'm leading or riding in groups to get us to the destination if I've never been there before and of course if you want to get yourself an Insta360 1R or any other of the Insta360 products go ahead and click my affiliate links below the goodies change each time I'm not sure what any individual person will get especially if you mix and match your own bundle. But, uh, you know, go ahead and check them out. And if you go ahead and try to buy one, click my link, get you some good stuff. Uh, I have been offered a couple opportunities to meet up with people because they either like my Instagram content, go ahead, another plug for the Instagram, or they've just liked uh, the pictures that I've posted up on Tonnet and I've received a couple direct messages, I've received a couple you know, little hints here and there, and I've even received one or two uh, invites to collab on some YouTube stuff, which is pretty cool. It's not like I'm popular or anything, but it's just, it, you know, it's pretty flattering. But that's generally how the bike life community is, right? Usually you want to meet and ride with other riders because it's fun. I mean, that's what you want to do. You want to meet up, you want to go ride, you want to go eat, you want to go do whatever, get some twisties. And uh, it's very, very similar to my uh, group ride video that I did a while back. But it's not exact, right? So a group ride is just a group, a bunch of people may or may not know them. And uh, it's one of those things where you have to judge everybody's skill level and plan your group ride out accordingly. This one is yeah, a slight twist on it. This is more for just straight meetups. I, although I am flattered, have issues meeting new riders, people I've never ridden with before. It's kind of like, you know, when there's a job you gotta have 50 years experience to get the job, but you can't get experience unless you get the job. It's one of those unfortunate downfalls of trying to ride with me because I'm very paranoid. Uh, I say it all the time, I'm in the military. All my riding buddies are military or former military. And uh, they just already got that level of trust that we've built up over years. So I trust all my buddies that I ride with because I know they're not gonna kill me. And even if they do, they, they probably pay for the funeral. It's not gonna be that, you know, that would never happen. I'm just saying, that level of trust is what I bring into my riding because at any time I usually ride out far. And there's no good riding in Detroit. You know, you gotta get out. You gotta get out past Farmington. You gotta get out up towards Armada. You gotta get out of the city. And I don't wanna be out there with some rando who one, doesn't know the area, and two, I can't trust to help me if I go down or if they feel like, oh no, this dude went down, I'm just gonna leave him. Normally that doesn't happen in the biker community. Normally riders, bikers are very, very compassionate and they will pull over even if they're in their cage, their car for you normies, and uh, 
help a fellow rider out if they're down on the side of the road or whatever. But sometimes, just because, like I say, riders are made out of people, you might get that person that's just straight up a butthole. He'll leave you. He'll cause some damage to your bike. He'll cause some detriment to the group, the ride itself. You know, and that's just worst case scenario just because somebody's been a butthole. But another different scenario, slightly better, is just a, a rider who is unskilled. And not that I have a problem riding with new riders. I actually love riding with new riders in a wannabe mentor type capacity. I've been offered several times to come ride with people, which is super cool. What I don't like is an unskilled rider who tries to impress, right? You, you, you don't want to do that because you push yourself beyond your means because you're trying to prove that you either can learn fast or you can pick up and you understand how the other riders are riding. You want to be a part of the group. Testosterone takes over. Uh, usually because I mostly ride with males. I have never really ridden. I've only ridden with a few females. And uh, I got to say, it's better when they lead because yeah, dude, women look good on bikes. Anywho, riding with new people creates a sense of anxiety for me. I don't know what this person is going to be like. If I've ridden with you before, great. I know how you ride. Either I'll want to ride with you or I'll avoid you or some, you know, flavor in between. But for the most part, if I am just meeting you for the first time, it takes me a while to commit. I have to get myself in the mindset to, hey, I don't know how this person is going to ride. So I have to be extra cautious, extra careful, extra head on a swivel because if they're leading, I have to prepare for how they're going to lead. If I'm leading, I have to prepare for how I'm going to lead. Are they going to ride up too close to me? Are they not going to respect my space? Are they going to try to ride two up? You know, double lane occupancy, not a good deal. Are they got not going to pay attention to me speeding up or slowing down? Are they going to watch my tail light? Are they going to pay attention to any of the indicators that I may miss? I treat every group ride like I'm riding alone in a group. So if I fail to point out a possum in the road, I expect that other very capable rider to see it for themselves and avoid that hazard and sometimes uh, inexperienced riders are not prepared to do that or if they're leading and want me to watch them or whatever I hope that they would point out an obstacle as I would try to but if they don't I have to understand that I need to also be prepared for anything that I don't see that might be in there or in my line of sight with their bike in the way so as soon as their bike passes now all of a sudden I see a hazard that I hadn't seen before because another bike was in this space. So that's a lot of thought process for the simple act of riding, I know, but that's how I think. And a lot of times it's very hard for me to explain that to other riders or people who ask me to go on, uh, on meetups, like, oh, you want to meet up, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to go through this, whatever, how long this video is explanation. I just go, hey, <laughs> I'm normally leery about meeting new riders. It takes me a little while to commit, but I'll let you know. And then after a while, I let them know, hey, um, no thanks or you know, let's roll. But I have to prepare myself. So if you ever send me a rider meetup, like also, yo, I ain't stupid either. Like I was, I, I might not be there now, but I was born and raised in the hood. I ain't getting robbed. You know, nah, not gonna happen. So if you you just try to get me alone, like I'm too, I don't trust anybody. But that's called life experience, son. I'm not about to just roll out with a group of randos and not have none of my boys with me. No. No, 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 no. We shan't be doing that. But if I'm rolling with a couple friends of mine, I feel a little more safe. You know, I'm not exactly a fighter. You know, I got some size on me, but hey, it, I don't, I'm just a bigger target to stab. You know, I ain't stupid. So, it's one of those things where I did. That's a bigger. I uh, don't want to put myself in a situation to where something could happen and I don't have anybody I trust around me. Now, if you roll with me for a few times and then I, you know, ignore you or whatever, I probably won't do that. I'm not just, you know, like a high school girl. I'm not just going to annoy you. I'm going to just say, hey, I, I, I don't feel comfortable riding your style of ride, but I do appreciate the offer. You know, I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings, but at the same time, you're a grown man. If you ride reckless and I'm not in the mood to do that, at the end of the day, I got to get home to my family. And uh, I got to get home <laughs> with a clean uh, arrest record. So hopefully I will be riding with a few people, have a couple more uh, compilation videos, music comps coming up. But the only reason it prompted me to make this video is because I've received a few 
like requests for meetup in the last couple days, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I'm like, dang, I feel bad because I didn't basically said no to all of them. So I thought it was just something I could talk about quick, fast. Plus, I felt like yapping on my way home after work. So I appreciate you guys watching. Of course, uh, hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the content, and uh, I will catch you later. <laughs>